It is Monday, April 15th, 2019. Welcome to the Sustainably Yours Homestead. So this year we decided to try growing potatoes for the first time ever and like I do with everything else I, I've done a lot of research on it and I found an article actually it was a whole bunch of different articles but they all basically um, cited the same article about growing a hundred pounds potatoes in a four by four box and so I think I'm gonna give that a try I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I've seen a lot of people talk about this method of growing potatoes and it has very mixed reviews but I think it could work not necessarily a hundred pounds of, t of potatoes but I imagine you could probably multiply uh, your yield by using this box or tower method so uh, we'll give it a try this year and what I've done is I've just taken a few pallets I've got three pallets set up in kind of a U shape it ends up uh, being, it's right at four feet across and just shy of four feet this direction. And it's about three and a half feet tall, which I think is probably more height than I will actually need. Um, this is where I'm going to plant my potatoes. First thing I need to do is get in here and clear out some of these weeds. And then... I'll need to mix my soil. What I have here, this is some compost that I have. This is composted cotton hull. I've used it for several years and it always works really well. So I'm going to take some of this. And I'll mix it with some of the, the regular soil from my garden. and some mulched up leaves, some leaf litter. And hopefully that's gonna give me the nice well-draining soil that I'm gonna need for my potatoes. Potatoes like nice loose soil that's well-draining and has a lot of organic matter. If you wanna know a little bit more about potatoes and what kind of conditions they like and why we grow them from seed potatoes instead of potato seeds, then um, I've got a blog post that I've linked to down in the, the video description. You should go check that out. And then come on back and finish the video because we're about to get started planting some potatoes. <laughs> Nice juicy worm. Let's go feed it to the chickens. Let's see if I can get him to eat this worm out of my hand. Come here, chicky chickies. Chick, 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 chickens. Come here, chick, 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 chicken. Come here, chick, 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 chicken. You can get it. Come on. It. There you go. Breakthrough! That was actually the first time I've been able to get one to eat something from my hand, so that was kind of cool. Anytime I throw a worm in, it's that yellow one that tends to take off with it. There he is again. Or she, whatever. Back to the potatoes. are 
the potatoes. I decided to go with Russet Burbank potatoes because um, they are a late variety indeterminate potato. And if you're not sure what that means, again, check out my blog post and I kind of go into a lot of detail about that and why it's important for, um, for a potato tower that you use late season or indeterminate potato potatoes. I bought these at, I believe, Lowe's. GMO free. I know there's a lot of controversy about GMO free and GMO free labeling. There are really aren't that many um, products, it, crops anyway. There aren't that many crops in the U.S. that are allowed to be sold GMO. Um, do some research and figure out which ones are and which ones aren't. There are a lot of uh, a lot of labels that say GMO free. Yeah, they're GMO free, but in the U.S., you're not even allowed to sell those products as genetically modified. So they're just kind of making money off the hype, I think. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and get my soil ready in the box, and then we'll start to put the potatoes in and cover them. Full disclosure: it is now Wednesday which explains the change of clothes. My phone battery died in the middle of filming last time, so, uh, and that's what I use for my camera. So I kind of just finished the dirt work and went inside. I figured I would wait and plant the potatoes when I had a camera. Also, found something. Check this out. Where is it? Where could it be? Have you spotted it yet? There it is. One, two, three, four. So I guess this will be today's little uh, good luck charm. But now I guess I need to go finish planting those potatoes before it starts to rain. You can see it's kind of, it's a little gray. It's supposed to storm uh, tonight and into tomorrow. And here's where I got to before I stopped last time. I just kind of piled the dirt in here. It's just a mixture of that composted cotton hole, some uh, dirt from the garden, kind of clay heavy, the dirt that I have in the garden right now, and some uh, some leaf mulch. All right, let me go get my potatoes and we'll put them in the ground and head inside. So judging from what I've read online, um, I think I'm gonna plant these about 12 inches apart. I'm gonna have two rows that are spaced about three feet apart. I should be able to get, um, are there eight in here? Yep, I should be able to get all eight of my seed potatoes planted in this roughly four by four box. So let's do that. And I want to bury these about four inches into the dirt. With potatoes, you don't want them close to the surface because if the potatoes are, are they, if they receive direct sunlight, and from some sources I've read, even if they're just too close to the surface, then uh, the plant will begin to produce toxins that are not good for you. Solanine or something like that. I guess I'm pronouncing that correctly. So uh, we're going to get them a good four inches under the dirt. And when I plant them, I want the main eye to be pointing up. This one. There they are. Now we need to bury them. Mm -hmm. 
So I've got them covered, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in a few more shovels full of uh, my cotton hull compost, and then uh, for water retention, we'll cover them with some uh, some leaf mulch or something like that to kind of help them hold on to some of the moisture just in case I forget to get in here and water them, which uh, I'm pretty bad about. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you may have noticed a giant pile of garbage bags by my garden. That's not just a pile of trash. That's uh, Those are leaves that I've picked up so that I can use them as mulch and compost. So oh, let's grab a bag of these. It's ripped open because I don't think I'll need that many. That should work. We'll just kind of toss these on top. Can I grow 100 pounds of potatoes in a 4x4 box? I guess we'll find out. I do think that the idea is plausible. I've found in my research that there are certain varieties of potatoes. They're called indeterminate or late season varieties, depending on what source you're looking at. But there are certain varieties of potatoes that uh, will grow new, they're called stolons. They're little shoots from the stem that go down into the soil and those produce the tubers that we call potatoes. Um, there are certain varieties of potatoes that will continue to shoot new stolons uh, throughout the life of the plant, right? Uh, as opposed to what we call determinate potatoes. They will shoot out one set of stolons um, the plant will die and then everything underground will kind of develop. So with these russet Burbank potatoes that I'm using, they are an indeterminate variety. So the idea is that as they grow, I will mound up around the stem and then that stem will grow roots. And then at ground level, new stolons will shoot out and produce potatoes in a second layer of soil. Then the stem will grow, I'll mound it up, potatoes will form in the third layer of soil, and so on until the growing season is over. Now rough estimates for uh, how, mu how many potatoes a single plant will form, I found online anywhere from 5 pounds to 10, all the way up to 20 pounds, which I, I think is probably a very high estimate. Um, with eight seed potatoes, if I had 20 pounds of potatoes per plant, man, I would almost double that 100 pound number. So I'm going to guess that for this box we're going to end up somewhere in the hopefully 50 to 80 pounds of potato range. If I get that many then I will consider this experiment a complete success, especially considering the fact that I've never attempted to grow potatoes before. So if you're interested in the results, keep on checking back. I'll, uh, I'll do update videos every time the plants come up above uh, ground level or every time I mound them up. And then we'll do one final unboxing video at the very end and see how it goes. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell thingy so you know when we, get, when we uh, put out new videos. And if you've, liked, if you've enjoyed this one, give us a thumbs up. That'll really help us out. I hope to see you again next time for more daily sustainable living and if you're a content creator but you've never heard of steam it man you need to jump on that it's a social media platform where you get paid just for sharing your content think something like a blogging platform meets Facebook meets reddit where the more upvotes you get the more steam you get for your post now I'm way oversimplifying it, but if you if you might be interested, I'll drop a link down in the description of this video. This is in no way an affiliated link or anything like that. I just think it's a really cool platform and I would like to see some more people jump